interesting topic. Today we are going to focus on installation art. What is installation art? It's an art movement that deals with the use of space and massive designs. Another subheading we are going to look at are motion pictures, the creation of designs using shapes and colors to create motion pictures. And you can see on the screen how motion pictures are combined together to create interesting motion movement. Then another sub the under this word contemporary art is performing art, the use of body to translate messages in and in a stage to pass messages to the audiences to watch a video on this When we go art. to a museum or a gallery, we're used to seeing paintings hanging on the wall and sculpture on stands. For artists who make this type of artwork, this is a good way to display their work. But some artists feel that traditional ways of making art are restrictive, and they've looked for new ways to express their ideas. This searching for new ways of expression started around the end of the 19th century or so, and was part of a period in history we now call modernism. During this time, some artists began experimenting with using everyday objects in their art. They felt this made their art relate to real life in a more direct way. Eventually, a German artist named Kurt Schwitters decided that there should be no separation between life and art. And so he built a house where the house itself was a work of art. He called this house Mertzbau. Everything in Mertzbau was part of the artwork. Changing an entire space to create an artwork was an idea that caught on. Rather than making drawings, paintings, or traditional sculpture, some artists began using found objects or making objects that would occupy an entire space. But the objects were not the art. The transformation of the space was the art. Artists installed these objects in a space, and this style of artwork became known as installation art. This also meant the viewers of the art would experience it differently. That's what these artists wanted. Rather than passively viewing art hanging on walls, viewers would actually be inside the art. Some installation artists include light, sound, touch, or even living things in their work. By changing the space, artists create an experience that often includes all of the viewer's senses. Many contemporary artists continue to make installations. Pepo Nosario is an artist from Puerto Rico. Before he became an artist, he was a social worker in New York. That experience influenced the way he approaches his art. He wants to return art to the community, and many of his installations are made in public places, like department stores. Osario is interested in portraying the life of the Latino community, and many of the objects in his installations come from his Latino culture. Yayoi Kusama is considered one of Japan's most important living artists. She was born in 1929, and at age 89 is still making art. As a child, Kusama suffered from hallucinations where she saw flashes of light and fields of dots. She's always been interested in the idea of merging the self with the whole of the universe, which she feels the dots represent. Much of her work uses dots and patterns to envelop the viewer. She also creates what she calls her infinity rooms, which use light and mirrors to create the feeling of infinity. Osu originally attended Seoul National University to study oriental painting. He later moved to the United States to study art. Developing as an artist in two distinct cultures comes through in So's work. Feeling nostalgic for his home in Korea and not being able to bring his actual house to New York, So began making cloth reproductions of Korean architecture. These reproductions fill large spaces and usually hang from the ceiling, which gives the viewer a unique perspective. Ching. Like Se, Aya is interested in the contrast between traditional and modern Chinese life. He has used objects that have been used for generations by Chinese families to create his installations of Jing De Jin, which is famous for its Chinese porcelain, to create millions of ceramic sunflower seeds. He installed these sunflower seeds at the Tate Modern Museum in London. The seeds beg the question, what does it mean to be an individual in today's society? He has also made an installation out of the discarded clothing from a Syrian refugee camp to bring attention to the worldwide refugee crisis. She went on to study sculpture in graduate school, and much of her work shows a relationship between the two. 
Hamilton often uses cloth and sewing to create elements for her installations. Often her work is inspired by the history of an individual place, weaving together history, story, and present times. Her work, The Event of a Thread, invited visitors to ride on a series of swings which moved a giant curtain and made the installation change over time. When he decided to become an artist, this interest in perception played a big role in his work. Terrell is known for working with light and space. He creates spaces where our perception is both challenged and changed. He often uses the changes in light throughout the day, which means that at any given moment, his art is new. His most ambitious work, a work in progress, is called The Rodin Crater, where he's changing a crater on his ranch in Arizona into an artwork that uses sky and space as an important element. You're minding your own business in an art gallery when all of a sudden a movement occurs out of the corner of your eye. It couldn't be. You break into a cold sweat and look around for the nearest exit. But it's too late. It's happening. It's performance art. Why? Why has my precious fourth wall been violated? Why must I be forced to endure this inevitable awkwardness? This is the case for performance art. Performance art is a term used to describe art in which the body is the medium or live action is in some way involved. This is nothing new, of course. Human beings have always performed in front of each other through ritual, storytelling, dance, carnival, and on and on. But as art evolved, the word became known for describing specific things, mainly objects like painting, sculpture, and drawing. Live action belonged to other disciplines like theater and ballet and opera. But during the course of the 20th century, artists began to incorporate live action into works and describe it as art. The Italian Italian futurists in the 19-teens saw performance as the only way to reach a mass audience, staging noise concerts and a kind of disruptive variety theater aimed at destroying, quote, the solemn, the sacred, the serious, and the sublime in art with a capital A. Think artists are kind of nuts? Well, the futurists wanted you to think that, arguing the name of madman with which it is attempted to gag all innovators should be looked upon as a title of honor. Dada artists embraced the crazy as well and built off the popularity of cabaret in post-World War I Germany. Artists Hugo Ball and Emmy Hennings opened Café Voltaire in 1916 in Zurich and invited artists and writers to come give musical performances and readings of all kinds. No one knew what might happen on any given night. It could be like this, or it could be like this offer a specific performance class, reinforcing it as a medium in its own right. Avant-garde theater flourished across Europe, and early surrealist Antonin Artaud theorized what he called the theater of cruelty, proposing a direct communication between the spectator and the spectacle, engulfing the spectator into the action, writing, we abolish the stage and the auditorium and replace them by a single site without partition or barrier of any kind, which will become the theater of the action. After World War II, Black Mountain College in the US became a hotbed of experimental interdisciplinary practice, with avant-garde composer John Cage teaching classes and staging collaborative productions. They put on a version of Eric Satie's surreal The Ruse of Medusa, featuring Merce Cunningham as Mechanical Monkey, Buckminster Fuller as Nonsensical Baron, and sets by Willem and Elaine de Kooning. Cage shared with his students his understanding of music as it relates to Zen Buddhism, that art should not be separate from life, but an action within life, with all of the accidents and chaos and occasional beauty that that entails. Participants in his production were given loose scores that left a lot to interpretation, had unpredictable results, and were impossible to reproduce. Choreographer and dancer Merce Cunningham's revolutionary approach, also shared at Black Mountain, proposed that such ordinary movements as walking and standing could be considered dance. The boom of abstract expressionist painting in the 1950s emphasized the body's involvement in making art. It's obvious but easy to forget when you're looking at, say, a landscape that every painting is a document of a series of actions that took place in the past. But with works like Jackson Pollock's, it becomes harder to ignore, with art critic Harold Rosenberg explaining the canvas began to appear to one American painter after another as an arena in which to act. What was to go on the canvas was not a picture, but an event. The Gutai group in Japan took these ideas a step further. Dress. Back in Europe, Yves Klein embarked on a series for which he hired female models to cover themselves in paint and make imprints of their bodies on paper. Instead of walking through a room and glimpsing these things that happened in the past, here it is in the room with you, happening right now. The godfather of the happening 
Alan Caprow staged his first in 1959 at Rubin Gallery, stating on the invitation, you will become part of the happenings. You will simultaneously experience them. Guests arrive with little idea of what would happen, both witness to and participant in loosely structured actions, left to make of it what they could. Caprow called it what he did because it was, quote, something spontaneous, something that just happens to happen. Artists associated with the Fluxus movement presented ordinary events as art, considering anyone and everyone to be an artist. At a 1962 Fluxus festival, Ben Patterson performed variations for contrabass, where he agitated its strings using a variety of unusual materials. Nam June Paik dipped his necktie and head in paint and drew a line along a 13-foot roll of paper. Allison Knowles made a big salad and shared it. Much of it was playful, but for others it was dead serious. Joseph Boys gave lectures and staged dramatic actions, enacting what he called social sculpture to try to change consciousness, believing art can and should transform your everyday life. Performance came into its own in the turbulent 60s and 70s. The civil rights movement and second wave feminism underline the fact that the body is politicalities and black bodies and queer bodies and bodies that bring together multiple identities could be reclaimed, reasserted, and represented through many lenses. Not just by white men this time, but by the actual persons in question. The minimalists were interested in phenomenology or the study of consciousness from particular points of view, and so were performance artists. Inserting live bodies into artworks was an immediate way to unsettle the delusion that a universal perspective exists, insisting that every body is a self, inscribed by events, language, history, and identity, and is always in perpetual flux. The war paintings, they positioned themselves in space and in nature. They positioned others in space. They performed tasks, and they asked others to perform tasks. They made constructions specifically to hold their bodies. They followed strangers. They took on other identities. They asked questions. They created stories. Since the 70s, performance art has been a relatively constant fixture in the world of art, used internationally to examine a wide range of issues. It's been documented documented and exhibited, but is largely resistant to commercial forces, offering artists a way to make work outside of the often oppressive market system. Performance today is so many different things. It's Caleb Lindsay singing as his alter ego, the melodramatic chanteuse Taiwan, whom he later declared dead. It's Aloran Calzadilla's Olympic gymnast performing choreographed routines on wooden replicas of airline seats at the Venice Biennale. It's Ryan McNamara being taught to dance in public. It's Kate Gilmore's bright pink house with women in white dresses swinging from its windows. It's Bennett Miller's Dachshund UN. It's Ragnar Kjartansson's Bliss, a 12-hour performance of the last minutes of Mozart's The Marriage of Figaro over and over again. And it's still the classic stuff like Marina Abramovic's wildly popular The Artist is Present, where the audience was invited to queue up and eventually face off with the artist. It should come as no surprise when Jay-Z, inspired by Abramovic's work, called his music video a performance art film, arguing concerts are pretty much performance art with the venues changed. Performance art was born of interdisciplinary thinking and still thrives in those spaces in between. Think art's a scam masterminded by the rich and rich hierarchies inherent in traditional art forms so that the artist could reach an audience directly, rather than through coded forms or the separation of a canvas or frame. It wasn't so much that people wanted to make something called performance art, but more that these activities seeped out from other disciplines where they no longer quite fit. Performance art can give you room to think about who you are, where you are, and how you relate to those who are not you. This is video art. On this aspect of this video, we are going to see how shapes, colors, Images are combined together to create pictures or video, motion videos. This artist is going to transit from the different colors of um, images and um, the combination of colors and how these colors are merged together to create images for viewers. And again, you see how these images are transited in sequence flow. To create um, motion pictures. You can see the transition of colors from black and white to colored um, background, and you see how rivers, the, the, the beach flows, the water flows. And again, with time, you, mean, you begin to see how <coughs> other images too are transited from colored to black and white and the combination of images. You can see on the screen right now how colors, how this river was 
initially black and white and transited to colored and from colored back to black and white. You can see the combination of colors and how the colors are transited and how they are merged when working on videos. There's the use of colors and now you can see the inclusion of shapes and um, other shapes with different shades of one colors and shades of different colors to combine together and a combination of extraordinary objects or images with on the human body. And this aspect, you can see the implication of images, trying to bring out the same images in different colors and the duplication of images. Here you can see the transition of these colors to cool colors from dull colors to bright, bright or vibrant colors, the transition and the movement. 